Hi there. Welcome everybody. I think we'll get started on the session. Thank you for coming along. My name is Laura Hill and I'm part of the team here at Cloud Essentials. Uh, really leading the charge in the practice that we've built around Microsoft Purview as we help our clients really tap into all the powerful capabilities that hopefully you're going to learn more about today uh, for compliance, for reducing risk and for generally improving the way that we're managing life cycle of content as it kind of flows into and around Microsoft 365. So this session today uh, is part of a regular cadence of webinars and events where we impart our knowledge as a partner and lessons learned really as we kind of supporting clients in this this continuous journey of adoption of Microsoft 365. So if you've not subscribed already as part of the process of joining us today um, to our, our newsletter, then please do so via um, the link in the chat so that you do receive regular insights from our technical and our compliance team. But yeah, the, the, the kind of common theme, I guess, around our webinars and the content um, that we create around this topic is that whilst we're a, a very Microsoft centric um, partner, our aim is never to just talk about the technology. You know, we want to rather help you understand the technology within the context of, of people, of process and of business needs so that any adoption that you invest in gets the outcomes that you need. So if you want to learn more about Microsoft 365 capabilities for compliance, if you want a, a tried and tested methodology for deployment and you want to pick the brains of um, some very experienced specialists, then you're certainly in the right place. I can see people kind of just gradually coming in um, to the session at the moment. So you're going to hear today from uh, two presenters uh, representing quite different perspectives really when it comes to uh, technology and, uh, and risk and Microsoft purview. So my colleague Johan van, Schalk van Schalkweg is our um, Microsoft 365 technical lead and he is going to bring many years of uh, technical experience to talk through some key capabilities in Microsoft purview. And then we're going to shift gear a little bit and my colleague Navasha Sanalal, who is our compliance and risk officer, um, who's from a financial background, is going to bring us some expertise on how to actually engage um, more the business stakeholders in discussions around risk management through uh, technology like Purview. So as with many of our sessions, our format is that we're going to leave the mics off just to, um, to listen to the content from our presenters today um, and then we'll stop recording we will unmute and just have a bit more of an open forum and informal session where you can bring your bring your thoughts bring your questions um to the panel so to do that please just use the q a um box on the right so that we can um, organize ourselves to to respond to those as we go yeah and if you get to move us through um the deck for those who don't know us already, um, just some quick context. We are a Microsoft partner around the area of content management. So we help organizations really mature their approach to reducing their risk profile of their content in Microsoft 365, migrating data and managing that data as cost efficiently as possible but ultimately really opening up the value of that content so that you can be surfacing it for your business advantage. So on the slide here are all the areas that you can um, work with us on as you become more progressive with Microsoft 365 and, and get more value from your licenses really, particularly in regulated industries like um, finance, energy, pharmaceutical construction is where we work, um, where we can help you really create those conditions for compliance across Microsoft Cloud. So just to take a, a kind of step back um, and broader context for this conversation, you're securing your data and ensuring compliance with policies on data management. It really is a, is a top concern for most organizations and 
data breaches are happening, you know, from malicious attacks from the outside, from maybe inadvertent or malicious attacks from the inside. And it's hard to manage because you have data very much living in, in multiple locations. And often what we see is quite a fragmented approach to managing it all, you know, having adopted maybe different technology solutions for managing data security, um, adopted for different reasons and at, at different times. And not only is that data living in multiple locations, it's being accessed from different locations as well as we've really kind of shifted to um, a hybrid and more flexible working model. And to, you know, to get their work done, people in your organization, they are collaborating with others inside and outside the organization. And it just means that content can roam everywhere, you know, across multiple devices, apps, multiple services, etc. And Crucially, potentially a large proportion of this data could be regarded as, as dark data, you know, data that is not, um, it's not classified, it's not protected, it's not governed, um, and therefore it's creating quite hidden compliance risks. And add to that, the compound effect of growth and of change, you know, your data footprint it doesn't stand still, it's ever expanding, it's moving all the time. The regulations around you don't stand still. The technology certainly doesn't stand still for a second. Um, you know, your business doesn't stand still. Uh, most of our clients that we work with in, in kind of finance verticals, we've supported through a lot of change, a lot of merger acquisition activity, et cetera. And, that's fundamentally why Purview exists. You know, it's this set of, of powerful tools to help you manage your data. And it's our job as a partner to help you really understand those tools and, and use them for potential. I'm just going to take a quick pause because I'm just looking at the slides and I'm not sure that they are um, moving forward. Is, can anyone give me confirmation that the slide deck is moving forward? Or is it just my view? Yeah, Johan, you put your hand up. Yeah, I just checked the, it's moving forward on my side. <coughs> ah, okay, well, thank you. So, there's lots of organizations here joining us today, and you know, we understand that many of you are at um, completely different stages of your Microsoft 365 adoption. And, you know, it's not only a, a platform for collaboration, but it's also very much um, an enabler for security and compliance. And we want to communicate with you that, um, you know, more information about what you've got perhaps already um, or that you've got potentially access to. You know, if you're new to this area, then um, potentially there's a quite a lot we might be introducing you to today um, as we give a, a high level picture. But it's true to say that, you know, the more that you consolidate your content into Microsoft 365 and the Azure ecosystem, the more centralized uh, control you will ultimately get and the more value you can squeeze from those licenses. But that said, you know, it's important to understand um, that it's it's not necessarily a tool set limited to just your later stages of, of Microsoft 365 adoption. You know, it is designed to help you manage data in a very joined up way, even if you've still got data on premises, um, even if you're still on your journey of migration into Microsoft Cloud or you're in a, a multi-cloud environment. And in fact, if you're still preparing to migrate and consolidate into Microsoft 365, then using some of the features of Purview can be incredibly effective ahead of your migration or as, um, as part of your adoption program. And yeah, an example of that um, is perhaps to understand your data better through file analysis, file analysis um, ahead of a migration to see whether it contains sensitive data so that you can, you can perhaps ring fence it, you can label it, um, or perhaps understand if it breaches data retention policy. So um, didn't ought to be sort of part of your migration scope um, at all and handled in a different way. 
So the, the features in Purview really allow you to create a um, almost a blueprint to how you want to manage particularly unstructured and, and semi-structured data from now on. Um, so I'm going to hand over to Johan um, to lead us in a bit of a grounding really of sort of foundational understanding of Microsoft Purview and what it is. And then I know you're going to kind of expand into a, a few core features. Thank you very much, Laura. Um, so Microsoft Purview is really an integrated range of solutions that help you protect your sensitive information, manage your data lifecycle, and also reduce your risks, both inside and external risks, um, allowing you to control and protect sensitive data within your organization. Um, it, it provides a vast range of solutions, predominantly broken down into three main categories of how you can actually utilize Microsoft Purview with regards to your information protection and governance. It allows you to understand and govern your data, gain more visibility of what is in your data, what's the sense of content that is within your data assets, whether those are Microsoft 365 data or even data hosted in on-premise and, and other source locations. It also allows you to safeguard your data, protect your data um, based on sensitive information or other criteria wherever it lives. It both supports protecting data in the native Microsoft um, data locations, but also again, legacy and third party data locations. And lastly, Microsoft Purview can help you improve uh, your compliance and risk posture by uh, identifying data risks and managing um, your regulatory and compliance requirements. So what I'm aiming to do today is to walk through these three different areas, starting off with understanding um, and governing your data and showcasing at a high level what purview solutions are available that can assist you with um, completing those tasks. Um, a lot of these, before I jump in, overlaps between the three different areas um, depending on the solution itself. So you'll see repetition or a few solutions mentioned that spans across all three solutions. But that is by design because Microsoft um, developed Purview to be an integrated solution that spans the holistic um, data protection and data management platform and solutions, not siloed or individual solutions that's bolted together. So the first one that I want to mention is Microsoft Purview Data Connectors. These are pre-built data collectors that allows you to protect, govern, and manage data beyond just Microsoft 365. It allows you to import um, through integrated um, data import connectors, either natively created by Microsoft or um, by their um, connected and approved connector partners. It allows you to import that corporate data from those external locations into your Microsoft 365 Purview environment so that you can utilize the integrated solutions within Microsoft 365 compliance that is built in um, on top of that integration, such as data lifecycle management, record management, and compliance manager, which we'll cover off in more detail later on. The next area that I want to cover off is the unified data governance with Microsoft Purview, which is the previous name known as Azure Purview. Um, it was rebranded to Microsoft Purview when they renamed compliance to Microsoft Purview. And this is allow, allows organizations to integrate the same functionality around managing your data and security of your data, but on more structured and external locations through the connectivity allowing allowed by the Microsoft Graph API and the Azure Connector functionality. So the first one under this category is then Microsoft Purview Data Map. What Purview Data Map allows you to do is to unify and make your data more meaningful, add visibility and um, displays of how your data in various locations is connected and the relationships of these data assets around your full data estates. Um, it allows you to automate scanning of content of the various data locations 
to be able then to classify and determine what the content are of all this data stores and data locations. And very importantly, um, utilize the built-in data classifications that Microsoft built into the solution to identify sensitive data within um, your data estate. There currently are 35 and a bit more data sources that you can actually bring into the data map, such as, for example, a SQL database, either Azure um, SQL Native or on an Azure server, but also Azure Blob Storage and other um, more structured data locations. The next one is Microsoft Purview Data Catalog. This allows you to then search across your full data start state um, and actually gain more usability of your data from a single area. Instead of allowing users search and browse and create functionality in those separate siloed data locations, Data Catalog allows them to search intelligently um, across the full data state and that will provide intelligent results and recommendations and it improves the visibility and usability across your full data estate. Under Microsoft Purview Data Estate is the next one, sorry, is Insights. This allows you to gain more usability and information of your data landscape, essentially a bird's eye view of your data landscape. Um, it identifies um, stewardship of your data, distribution of your different asset um, types and data types within your data estate. Um, like I mentioned before, you'll be able to pull reports and have dashboard, dashboard, dashboards of sensitive data across your data estate based on those built-in classifications. And then lastly, you were able to use the business glossary utilization where you can build your data estate and summarize that um, and use it more within your organization. The next category is solutions that falls more in how you can protect and um, um, lock down your data with regards to external exfiltration or internal risks. And the first one there is um, wrapping up the final solution within Microsoft Purview is the data policy functionality. And this allows your end data engineers to determine um, and control how access, um, uh, how end users can access and manage data within your data estate, um, essentially locking down permissions or removing permissions to sensitive and confidential data um, from a single location built into Microsoft Purview. It currently supports Azure subscriptions, resource groups, but also um, unstructured and structured data locations such as Azure Blob and SQL databases. The next area um, and solution within Microsoft Purview is information governance. And information governance provides you with built-in capability of managing um, your content and data throughout its life cycle from creation to through to retention and lastly deletion or defensible deletion at the end of the retention period. And under information governance, there's essentially essentially two solutions built into Microsoft Purview, and that is data lifecycle management and records management. So starting off with data lifecycle management, it allows you to perform in-place management of your data where, where they are currently stored, either in your Microsoft 365 data locations, Azure locations, or even supported third-party locations. Um, it ensures you can retain data um, for, um, the required um, retention period as you can, um, as you re require to meet your regulatory and compliant requirements. It allows you to classify and also protect data based on sensitive content. Um, and this sensitive content can be either the off the shelf sensitive, um, sensitive information types that Microsoft built into Microsoft Purview, which currently stands around more than 300 sensitive information types. You can also build custom sensitive information types, including document recognition type sensitive information types, such as trainable classifiers, where you can utilize machine learning and artificial intelligence from Microsoft 
to recognize documents and document types and classify them and control their life cycle. Um, data lifecycle management includes a defensible process, which is important with regards to meeting regulation requirements such as FINRA, where you need to prove that um, the stringent information government requirements are met and data that is deleted is defensively deleted and there's audit trails available. Um, as mentioned before, there's pre-built data connectors available, which means the same functionality can be um, can be applied to external third-party data that has been imported or connected through those data connectors into the Microsoft Purview landscape. Records management, very similar to data lifecycle management, but here you classify important um, and sensitive information and documents as actual records. And again, it allows you to classify and retain the, these records based on the content and the records type within your organization. Um, it can then again in, use intelligence to apply the re correct retention and protection policies um, on top of those documents based on the sensitive content that is within those um, record types. And the same as um, the general lifecycle management, uh, record management includes again a fully defensible deletion and audit trial process as part of the data lifecycle management process. The next solution that's available from Microsoft Purview is data loss um, prevention, and this is really built to prevent accidental and unauthorized sharing of sensitive and confidential information outside of your organization. As you can see on screen, Microsoft Purview DLP spans a vast range of solutions, um, starting off with Microsoft 365 natively, where all the applications can utilize the protection from Microsoft DLP, but also can be extended into endpoint DLP, where the same data loss prevention policies can control how data is shared from those endpoint devices, whether it's printing of data or also copying data to external storage or any other external mechanisms. It also supports integration with non-Microsoft applications um, and source providers, and that's all done through an API-based approach and through the cloud um, application protection portal. Um, and like Laura mentioned, um, depending on where you are with your journey, Microsoft Data loss prevention can also be extended to on-premise locations so that you can start consuming and benefiting from Microsoft Purview TLP before you migrate content into the cloud environment. Insider risk management is the next feature within Purview, one of the more newer features that's been around for a while, but still not as mature as all the other solutions. And it's really built to protect and identify malicious or accidental insider activities and, and, and be able the organization to investigate and to remediate these risks. Those are built on top of templates based on machine learning recommendations of identifying behaviors such as data exfiltration after re re um, resignation and other trigger points is then used to determine a risk score for each user's activity. And on top of that risk identification, protection policies and other active and other remediation activities and security controls can be implemented as part of the investigation and risk resolution journey to ensure that automated response to these risks are built into your purview solutions. Very important is that privacy is built into um, inside the risk management. So this ensures that end user confidentiality and privacy is always maintained and um, throughout the investigation lifecycle built into insider risk. Insider risk allows you to also utilize the single administrative and dashboard within insider risk for the end to end investigation, allowing multiple roles or divisions within your organization 
to collaborate and investigate and work together on a single case that spans security, HR, and internal or external legal um, wherever required. Microsoft Purview Information Protection is the next um, solution that I want to cover, and it's a big, vast, interconnected range of solutions that allows you to protect, classify, encrypt, and ensure the data is controlled um, with, um, regardless of where it is stored um, in the cloud, in the external party, um, in the external source platform, or even ex um, externally shared with um, collaborators with the organization. So to start off within information protection, it starts off with the central piece, and that's sensitive information types. As I mentioned before, those can be out of the box in some information, sensitive information types, but also the various custom or document-based and other trainable classifier sensitive information types that you can create as part of your business requirements. Once you know your sensitive information types, you can then apply sensitivity labels onto content essentially identifying the content within those the data types, so within those documentation, and based on that sensitive labels, you can then apply controls and um, policies on various locations. So for example, within Office 365, you can then restrict access and permissions um, from any, any um, application on any device type, but also on the browser, and you can control access to the content based on the sensitive labels applied to those documents and locations. It also integrates within Defender for cloud apps, so you can then apply the same sensitive labels um, in documents that's in those supported source applications. So even if you utilize these third party source like data locations and um, storage locations, your sensitive labels and protection can live within those external source platforms. It can very importantly be extended to on-premise protection through the purview information protection agent um, and server functionality where on-premise SharePoint um, sites and, and file servers and NAS shares can all benefit of the manual and automated labeling and the sensitive labels being applied to content and locations on those legacy on-premise locations, either before, during, or after um, adoption of a broader range of cloud platforms. The same as data loss prevention, it can in integrate and connect to <clears throat> sensitivity labels, ensuring um, endpoint DLP can utilize sensitive labels when it comes to protecting data built into the endpoint data loss prevention mechanism, ensuring that items classified um, with a more restrictive label will not be able to be copied um, or shared or printed based on your configuration of those protection policies. As mentioned before, um, the built-in data classification and sensitive information types is integrated into the purview data governance services within the Microsoft Azure um, purview locations. So you can apply the same labeling on top of the structured and storage locations in your Azure environment through those inter integrated connections. Then as mentioned before, because Purview is a fully integrated solution, the functionality built into Purview information protection can all be integrated into some of the advanced and more, um, more expensive licensed options within Purview, your E5, um, E5 security, or E5 compliant licenses. So it can all integrate into those advanced solutions, which include insider risk, e-discovery premium and compliance and communication plans. Lastly, is the category uh, of the Microsoft Purview solutions that can assist you with, to improve your compliance and risk posture. And it starts off with Microsoft Purview Audit and the premium version of this. 
obviously because it's a premium feature, it is included in E5 licenses. So the more mature or more, um, more, um, have the more um, incorporated license, the E5 gives other compliance or security E5. And what the preview, uh, sorry, purview premium license for auditing allows you to do is to extend the native audit functionality and retention based on your regulatory and compliance requirements. So instead of the 90 day or a year retention policies that's built into the free or standard Microsoft audit, premium allows you to uh, set up retention policies for audit up to 10 years so that you can retain audit logs um, for more for longer period. The next solution is communication compliance. So this leverages machine learning and AI templates to identify um, scenarios within your organization that needs to be investigated with regards to um, policy violations within organizations, such as use of offensive language, intimidation, um, and the like of those scenarios. And what it allows you organizations to do is to leverage the integration between the Microsoft um, estate, which spans Teams, OneDrive, Exchange, and SharePoint, and also third-party content to identify those um, malicious um, and risky behaviors, and then also to trigger automated or manual remediation workflows to investigate those um, scenarios so that um, the appropriate um, actions can be taken to address those behaviors and risks within your organizations. The next one is Compliance Manager within Microsoft Purview, and this is allows you to um, control and implement your required guidance and regulatory requirements and manage that from a single location. Um, it's built on built-in templates or self um, and self-developed or third-party assessment templates based on industry standards such as NIST baseline data protection template and also the ISO templates. And what this allows you to do is to manage implementation of those um, controls and policies within your organization from a single area where you have the ability based on those assessments to track improvement actions, to upload documents to a single area where you can use that to prove that you've implemented the required controls, but also importantly, utilize the built-in automated testing or recording of manual testing steps to validate the controls um, and testing during your implementation of the various regulatory or compliance standards that you want to adopt within your organization. It also allows your various teams within your organization from risk through to legal data and data compliance and IT to work together in a single area where tasks and um, all activities is tracked and monitored from a single location. And then lastly, within Microsoft Purview is the eDiscovery Premium. And this is a step up from the eDiscovery standard that is included in uh, enterprise licenses with Microsoft 365. And what Premium includes on top of that is the additional indexing um, and crawling of um, limited index documents, also external sources that you might want to add to your eDiscovery case. It also allows you to add external custodian and data locations within your eDiscovery case, which is not included in eDiscovery standard. And the biggest benefit is that you can manage and control the case from a single location, both for internal and external um, investigators and collaborators for the the eDiscovery case. You can invite um, either your internal or external legal um, counsel into your eDiscovery case so that they can perform the required investigation and actions from the single location. And the biggest benefit is the utilization of the intelligent machine learning and um, AI-based models 
where the, the speed and resolution of these cases are, are improved by based on the way that Microsoft integrates those intelligent um, when it comes to investigating the data as part of your discovery case investigation. So from an overview, I know it's a lot um, of all the preview solutions. Um, I'm happy to hand over back to Laura and, and she will take it back to the next steps. Laura, over to you. Thank you, Johan. Um, yeah, thanks for the questions as well that have been going on. We picked up on a few and um, we'll certainly fire them over in the Q&A session um, shortly. But yeah, I suppose just to just to come out of the technology a little bit um, as we move into the next section of the webinar. So risk and compliance is a, it's a very broad, it's a very complex area. And whilst the technology is really just kind of one piece of that puzzle, using the technology like Purview is now one of the most effective ways of managing data risk, not just from a pure technical um, kind of controls point of view, but also the way that it can actually help you influence user behavior and enforce process um, and drive a much more um, progressive culture really around how you're managing compliance. But despite the powerful capabilities that you um, have got available within Microsoft Purview, we know that organizations do face um, kind of barriers, I suppose, to, to the adoption of some of this technology. And maybe some of these, these factors here on this slide resonate with you. Um, often we see there's a lack of awareness of actually the art of the possible with the technology, you know, what you can actually achieve with it, um, especially within what are more traditionally less technical roles, um, risk of compliance and assurance. And sometimes there's also a bit of a misalignment perhaps between the security and the compliance initiatives um, that you want to embark on and the license tiers that you've got in place. I've seen today there's quite a lot of questions around, around licensing, which um, can be a complex area and we'll certainly try and tackle that um, towards the end of the session. But also sometimes we see that it's hard to build momentum because maybe in-house teams don't have um, the time, they don't have the, the resource capacity to actually build a whole program around governance and compliance. So adoption can take a bit more of a shorter term view or play itself out in, in sort of sporadic projects, which is sometimes not ideal. And there is also a skills gap that we see across across the whole of EMEA, you know, specialists in this area that are really able to um, confidently lead decision making around this, because a lot of decisions do need to be made for the adoption of these purview controls that Johan um, talked to us about, you know, ahead of ahead of executing on any of them. And the kind of third area around sustainability um, we see as being difficult, you know, sometimes adoption just isn't um, sustainable and the pace doesn't keep up because there's perhaps a lack of agreed strategy, you know, and often that can be a consequence of just not having alignment between technical risk, uh, business stakeholders in the, the direction of travel that you're going in with tool sets like Purview. So with this in mind, um, Navash is going to lead us now in some thinking around how to how to overcome some of these barriers. So Navash, I'll hand over to you. Thanks, Laura. Hi, everyone. So studies have shown the cost of non-compliance is twice is sorry, three times the cost of compliance. And despite this, it's often difficult or sometimes seems impossible for organizations to become compliant and remain compliant with regulations. And this is due to the sheer volume of regulatory changes, coupled with the ever evolving technology and resource constraints, which often hinders an organization's ability to implement effective controls that adequately addresses its growing compliance risks. Today, I'll be providing you with an overview of the Cloud Essentials compliance methodology, or the formula for success, which we like to call it. And this formula focuses on incorporating best practices in the fields of assurance and technology. And the first of which um, is to ensure that controls implemented address the people, process, and technology within an entity. And secondly, that controls implemented involves elements of a combined assurance model. 
And this basically seeks to incorporate and optimize all assurance services and functions so that taken as a whole, these enable an effective control environment. Our five step uh, formula for achieving greater compliance maturity is based on these best practice principles, as well as our years of experience. I'll be taking you through these steps. Step one um, is aptly named Assess and Benchmark, and it seeks to gauge the current compliance and technology position of an entity by taking into consideration regulatory requirements, stakeholder skill sets, and doing a technology validation. The purpose of this step is for the organization to get an accurate view of their current landscape to create and to create a basis for the way forward, which gives the organization an indication of what needs to be done when. To, to give you a more practical example, we've seen this, we've seen the step it happen in the most quick, most focused assessment um, that Cloud Essentials have done. And this was due to our client having a very highly compelling commercial reason for it. So in the example I'm going to share, our client was in a race for contractual partnerships to develop and distribute COVID-19 vaccinations. They had to demonstrate very rapidly their compliance with privacy regulations, like the General Data Protection Re Regulation, or the GDPR, and ISO 27001 standards. This was in order for them to collaborate with developers of the vaccine, and they needed to know where they stood with regard to controls. And this was in order to in order to determine the laws and standards that would be applicable to them and what they needed to meet. So in this instance, Office 365 was to be used for this sensitive content and as the collaboration platform to facilitate communications between the organization. This required an assessment of their current position and to know precisely what the outcomes of that assessment meant in terms of remediation and implementation of controls in Office 365 in order to demonstrate compliance and a strong controlled environment and a strong control environment. This process was primarily driven by their technical team. So the approach to assessing and benchmark placed a lot of emphasis on understanding what the law and standard required, so as to inform the flow down into technology that quickly followed. Some of the learnings from this organization around the assess and benchmarks for instance was firstly, doing a benchmarking process or a gap analysis is extremely effective as a catalyst for finding out what you need to take action on. Getting the cold hard facts and establishing a starting point. And secondly, things happen a lot quicker if you have a commercially com compelling reason to demonstrate compliance. And there's a lot at stake. And normally this requirement comes from a top-down approach. And it means you'd normally get immediate buy-in from senior executives. Moving on to our step two, which is to prioritize and plan. This means determining what needs to be done in the short, medium, and long term. Best practice is to determine, to determine this would be to adopt a risk-based approach. This approach, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with, is used widely by regulators, regulators and industry bodies, such as the Financial Action Task Force, or FATF. A risk-based approach caters for both compliance-driven and risk-based categorization of priorities in order to manage the use of resources and focus on risks that could lead to a catastrophic consequence for organizations. Step three focuses on assembling and engaging. In large organizations, it's very easy for things to happen in silos, as I'm sure you're all very familiar with. When developing a project team or work stream, it's very important that the outcome leads to the adoption of controls that incorporate people, process, and technology. I'm sure many of you have been in meetings before and questioned either why you're there or why isn't another team or not another business function there. The flip side of this would be having robust discussions and coming up with great solutions, but not having consulted the right people to implement those solutions in those discussions. Cyber criminals are getting smarter and more innovative by the second. 
The World Economic Forum has named cybercrime and cyber insecurity in their top 10 risks for both the next 10 years and the next two years. As regulation develops and technology develops with it, it's imperative that technology and assurance teams like risk and compliance work together to continually enhance data privacy and cybersecurity solutions. It's critical that departments collaborate on their compliance solutions. One of the key drivers behind effective collaboration between IT and assurance functions is the creation and fostering of a compliance culture, which ensures an organization and all of its staff understand the need and value in compliance and see it as more than just a legal obligation. It's also so important for security and technology teams to be very much a part of the risk and compliance process and discussions. While technology is often seen as the last piece of the puzzle, it is also now one of the most effective ways of deploying and managing not only technology controls, but also people and process controls. Think of learning and training management platforms that rely more on the underlying technology to, de to deliver and monitor and purview compliance managers that Johan just took us through that can help you constantly monitor and measure centralized compliance documentation and collaborate on tasks across areas in the business. A typical example of this would be the implementation of marketing consent rules has contained in the data in data protection legislation to an organization's communication strategy. This requirement has a touch point on various teams. The marketing team to create documentation, the compliance team or legal teams to ensure that wording and the process is in accordance with regulation and the technology teams to ultimately execute. It's not as simple as receiving an opt out response on an email. The value that lies in correctly ex executing such a process would include being able to remove customers who do not consent from future communications, tailoring market campaign, marketing campaigns to customers going forward, helping to identify and create valuable customer trends, and lastly, ensuring the organization steers clear of customer complaints or undue scrutiny from the regulator. I'm going to be taking you through um, an example of our assemble and engage phase with a previous client. This is an example of a small but rather complex organization that truly believed and understood the power of collaboration. This company operates in 200 countries and are globally diverse, which I can only, which we can only imagine how that increases their complexity in ensuring a, a mature compliance stance and in their compliance journey. As a commercial messaging service, they need to demonstrate at all times compatibility or, or compliance with legislation such as the Protection of Personal Information Act um, in South Africa or the GDPR. And even though they were a very small team, what they did well was to create a steering committee. And within that committee, they dedicated it to getting data privacy initiatives off the ground and all the way through to deployment. They engaged key stakeholders from many different functions and did so with a lot of drive and enthusiasm. And one stakeholder championed the, the program and ensured colleagues pitched up and did their bit. It meant that outcomes of assessment work didn't fall on deaf ears. Rather, there was a working group ready to make decisions and collaborate on the next step. What we learned from this client around the assemble and engage phase is that having an enthusiastic internal champion makes a huge difference to bringing people together to engage on the compliance journey. If you're lucky enough to have someone to wear this hat in your organization, please don't let them go. If not, there's a passionate partner like us around to help you with this space. Our next two steps are firstly to drive and deliver, which is our step four. And this stage focuses heavily on the driving of and the actual doing of work, which in this context would be the implementation of the correct systems, appointing the right people with the skills needed by the organization to tackle issues identified 
in previous stages and to put processes and technology in place to achieve increased compliance maturity. In this stage, it is important for all stakeholders to continually understand the value behind the effort and the outcomes it could lead to, such as good business practice, client satisfaction, and client confidence. Step five in our methodology focuses on the monitoring of controls implemented in order to determine the adequacy and effectiveness of those controls in mitigating compliance risks and reporting of the outcomes of such monitoring. Monitoring activities provide a mechanism for tracking, which is what is successfully meeting compliance objectives and highlights any weaknesses across the people, process and technology controls. Reporting provides organizations with a basis for implementing corrective actions, provides evidence of the success of a compliance program, or provides evidence of system weaknesses, and assists with planning and reshaping future compliance obligations and technological solutions. If you take away one thing from our compliance methodology, it, would, it should be the importance of a symbiotic relationship between the assurance teams and your technology teams in order to create effective controls that center on people, process, and technology in order to improve your compliance posture. Thanks, Laura. Back to you. Thank you, Lisa. So, yeah, just to kind of wrap things up um, in the presentations before we, we hit some questions. So, yeah, I think from Univasha, the message is loud and clear, you know, don't go it alone in terms of, of leading with the technology without that engagement from, from risk and from compliance and, and from um, assurance colleagues and, and that buy-in from the business. And, yeah, that's a similar message I suppose we want to finish up with, you know, don't go it alone if you think your program around Microsoft Purview will will benefit from input, um, you know, from a partner like us where we've got proven ways of, of really breaking down those barriers um, to successful adoption. So we hope you've learned something new around Microsoft Purview and we've helped in some way um, in progressing your thinking uh, around the topic. Some, some practical places to go from here might be to um, maybe gear up for a trial period where you can get access to Microsoft Purview and we can certainly support you with that. Um, I'm going to put a link um, in the chat here to a latest blog article that we um, have written around getting the most out of your trial um, so that you uh, can do some testing with, with real precision and with real context um, so that you're getting the most from that, that time. Often also an assessment can be a great place to start to just get better visibility on your level of risk at present um, in terms of sensitive data that you're holding perhaps, um, but also to benchmark the controls that maybe you've got already and maturity levels that you've got so that you can um, better figure out quick wins and the kind of places to start. So that's also something that we can support with. And in any case, one-to-one -one discovery calls available with us if um, it would be helpful to, to host a conversation to just explore your challenges and, and intentions around Microsoft Purview a little bit more.